All right, so now we're gonna talk about data frames and vectors. And basically everything you save, everything you do in R, you can think of as some type of object. The two basic objects are data frames and vectors. Um, it's easy to get confused as a beginner and hear lots of things. I think most people that teach will teach about lists and vectors and data frames and types of vectors and strings and numerics and doubles and um, integers and factors and everything. But if you just understand the basic idea of data frames and vectors, you'll be far enough along to pick up the rest kind of as you're playing with R and getting it. And that's kind of the whole philosophy behind these videos, just to get you a start to get understand. So. The first thing I'm going to show you and convince you of is that data frames are made of vectors. So I want you to understand what a vector object is and what a data frame object is. And so what we'll pull up is empty cars. Oh, first, we're always going to load that tidyverse. And I'm going to just because it makes it look way nicer. I'm going to basically make empty cars be a data frame. So what that did was it allows me to see everything and so I have empty cars here right and I've got basically 32 rows and 11 columns and what I want you to think about is each of these columns is a vector and they're just vectors stacked on top of each other and so what a vector is just a list of numbers or a list of letters or what have you and so the way you get a vector out is you just do the name of the data frame and then a dollar sign and then which vector do you want to grab maybe i want to get just the gears and so looks like all the gears it's four 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 and i pulled up the vector four 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 and so it's a vector you can think of it kind of horizontally and then i stacked them in a line vertically to create it so i can also get empty cars carb and I'll get the list, it starts with the four, four, one, one, two, one, um, what have you. And there's one other rule when you're creating a data frame where you have a data frame. It's a bunch of vectors stacked next to each other, but they all have to have the exact same length. So you create kind of this like rectangular structure. And so you can always find the length of a vector by running the length function. So it looks like there's 32 rows. So if it's 32 tall, there must be a length of 32. And unsurprisingly, the length of this car vector will also be 32. And so this data frame empty cars is made up of 11 different vertically stacked vectors, each of length 32. You can grab it out by doing a dollar sign and then the name. And so that'll be coming, that might not be obvious why that's important right now, but that'll be much like very important to think about. Um, also, we can create a data frame from vectors. And so I can have my vectors and then I can put them in the data frame object. So let, let's say I have some vector called X. That C stands for concatenate. It means I'm gonna put the numbers I list together into a vector. So I run that. Let's actually just make this look a little fresh. So I run that. And then let's also say Y is gonna be four numbers. And so notice if I run X, if I run Y, they're both length four. Remember that's important if I'm gonna create a data frame, they have to be the same length. So all I do here is if I use this data frame command, we'll say data equals data frame, and then I'm gonna list the vectors, X comma Y. So I created a vector of length four, a vector of length four, putting it in a data frame. And now if I look into data, I have the two vectors stacked next to each other and now it's in one object called called data. If I want to get x back, I can use that dollar sign notation. Data dollar x, data dollar y, gets me my vectors back. So I can move back and forth between this idea of vectors and data frames. Vector is the most fundamental idea. Um, data frame is kind of where you how you'd imagine most data. It's like Microsoft Excel store stuff is almost a data frame. It's like a rectangular format with rows and columns. Um, one side note, even one number is a vector. And so how I can show you that is x equals 2, 3, y equals 2. I can also do this data frame thing with x and y. And it just creates this one, there it's one length, so I get one row as a result. 
And so the last thing I'll do is I'm going to just briefly mention lists because it'd be the next thing to learn. It's not terribly important to understand, but lists. What if my vectors aren't the same length? So if I want to put multiple vectors together that aren't the same length, I'm going to run into problems with a data frame because I'm not going to be able to make it kind of that rectangular format. So let's just do four, five, two, one, and then we'll do Z equals one to four. This one colon four basically gives you one, two, three, four. And so, well, I didn't want to do this. I want to actually make them different lengths as an example. So, so let's make Z be one to 10. So now I have W is four numbers, Z is 10 numbers. And what I showed you before was doing data frame W comma Z, but I'm, I get an error. And it's because I'm trying to stack them next to each other in this rectangular format of a data frame, but the length, the lengths don't match up. That's basically what it's saying. And so the final idea, and just kind of wet your whistle on with this concept, is a list. And a list is kind of like a, just the most flexible thing imaginable. You can put anything inside a list. You can even put lists inside lists and create this like crazy um, wild world. But for now, we'll just create a list of two things, um, we'll call it my list. And so now I was able to save W, which was a vector of length four, and Z with vector of length 10 in the same object called my list. If I look inside of it, the first entry is my first vector. The second entry is my second vector. Let's say I just wanted to get W out. Well, W was the first thing. And so that's how you get just W out. Let's say I wanted to just get Z out. Well, Z is the second thing. And you use this kind of weird double square brackets here, which we'll talk more about later when we talk about lists and when you'd use them in general. But at a very basic level, it's just a much more flexible way to understand things. So that's that data frames are made up of vectors and vectors can be put together as data frames. How do you store something more flexi flexibly? Um, know that lists exist and that's, that's a possible solution for that. Yeah. So you got the basics, you're off and running, you can play around um, with all this stuff in R on your own. That's the beauty of R is that it's interactive, which means you can get the feedback from the learning process by opening it and playing it around and using some of the basic, really basic code I use and then adapting it being like, I wonder what would happen if I did this, doing that. And it'll tell you what would happen and then you can try to figure out how, how R is operating in the background. Okay.